Hey everyone, I know things look a bit different, but we will explain it all at the end, I promise. Way back in 2015, when the world made sense, NASA's New Horizon mission flew by the dwarf planet Pluto way out near the Kuiper Belt, an asteroid field that encircles our solar system. At the time, scientists felt they had this planet figured out. Then, these images and the accompanying data from Pluto completely blew their collective brain cases. Since 2006, when the International Astronomical Union updated their classification of the word planet, there's been a huge debate in the public and in the scientific community about the fate of dwarf planets. The IAU says a planet has to be a sun-orbiting body that is massive enough to be round and will have cleared its orbit, meaning nothing gets in the way as it goes around the sun. This definition keeps asteroids, comets, and moons from being planets, but it excludes some smaller bodies, which is why Pluto is now called a dwarf planet. So, our solar system has eight planets, but it also has five dwarf planets. Ceres, Pluto, Eris, Makemake, and Haumea. That's right, the current definition actually upgraded four other objects, and yet nobody talks about it. We have 13 planets in our solar system. The thing is, dwarf planets aren't technically planets, though for some reason giants and ice giants are. A new paper purports to change everything when it comes to planetary classification. The short paper, published in Lunar and Planetary Science, wants to reclassify planets as a round body that has never undergone fusion and has less mass than a star. That's it. This means Pluto would be a planet again, which is great, but it would also bring friends. Ceres, Eris, Makemake, and Haumea would become planets, as well as 97 other objects. Under this definition, our solar system would have 110 planets. There are several reasons scientists care about this. First, the current definition says all planets have to orbit the sun, our sun. This means even though we've discovered over a thousand exoplanets, there are only eight real planets in the universe. Planets orbiting other stars aren't orbiting the sun, so are technically not planets. Yes, it's pedantic. This is science we're talking about. Pedantry is part of the game. On the other hand, both definitions do count being round as important because it keeps asteroids out of the planetary club. But the front row students are already pointing out, the moon is round, and yes, under the definition, our moon would be a planet, as would all the round moons of Jupiter and Saturn and elsewhere. Defining planets in the way the IAU does now is, quote, flawed, according to scientists. Not just because it demoted Pluto, but also it does seem unfair to discount the celestial bodies out there that are as unique and interesting as Saturn or Venus. The researchers hope if we start recognizing Makemake and Ceres and Io and Enceladus as planets, maybe we will get the budget to go there. This debate really pits branches of science against each other. Planetary geoscientists want to physically explore the planets. Astronomers want to classify and observe them. One of the lead authors on this paper is Alan Stern, who is an outspoken critic of the 2006 IAU reclassification. This debate was reignited because of that incredible data scientists received from Pluto. Plus, the things that we're learning about moons like Europa, Enceladus, Titan, Io, and Ganymede. Pluto, for example, is no longer considered a boring icy rock zipping around out past, but sometimes nearer than Neptune. Instead, we know it has complex geological processes, which may hide subsurface oceans, glaciers of nitrogen, a thin atmosphere, and its solar planetary interaction is unique and unlike the octet of pompous planets in our solar system. But does being more interesting than we thought warrant Pluto's undemotion? What do you think? By now, you may have noticed we've made some changes to both the show and the channel, and more changes will be happening over the next couple of weeks. We're now officially Seeker. Seeker is all about science and innovation and technology and the universe around us. We'll be bringing you more in-depth documentaries, experiments, VR content, interviews, and of course, science updates from your favorite hosts. We have a lot of really awesome stuff in the works, so please subscribe, check out Seeker.com and our Facebook page, and thanks for your support. Tell us your thoughts in the comments, and if you want more incredible science about Pluto, check out Ian O'Neill's video on it here. He's an astrophysicist. He knows what he's talking about.